those who reject redistribution and those who favor inequality. But the problem is, it is an unsustainable system. The system whereby the income inequality continues to widen and economic crises are precipitated and as a result, government is having to pay a lot more in terms of cost of resolving problems through increasing debt, indebtedness, is not sustainable. Between 2008 and 2016, the U.S. federal debt has grown from 10 trillion to 18 trillion or more. It is not sustainable in the long term. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that in year 1900 to 1931, we had a gold standard anchored on the British pound as a global currency. From 1945, after the Second World War to date, the world is anchored on, on the American dollar. History tells us empires rise, empires fall. The question is, are we prepared for the next global transition? If we are not thinking clearly with understanding, with knowledge, and with wisdom, we will not be prepared. It is not whether it will happen. It's inevitable. Look at the history. And some of us who are here, sometimes because we don't have understanding of history, we are unnecessarily discouraged. The reality is, 1300 BC, the world powers were in Africa. Go and check your history. The global powers were in Africa. So the idea that you are a bunch of backward people is falsehood. Go and check your history. And I think when we do that, you'll be encouraged. Now, recessions we've said, there are several of the recessions. How did they affect us? In 1973-75, we had the oil boom as a result of the oil embargo. It triggered a recession in the West, but it was good for us because we had oil boom. Or so we thought. In 1980-1982, the oil boom reversed. We are built our consumption pattern that was not sustainable because we are not thinking ahead. We are reacting to circumstances rather than thinking ahead. Yes, there's a boom today, but it's transitory. It will not last. And then, of course, in 2008-2009 uh, recession, we again didn't anticipate it. As a result of that, the stock market crash index from over 65,000 to under 20,000. And the asset base from 12 trillion to under 5 trillion. We had that experience. We repeated it in 2014 to 2016. Those who fail to learn from history, they are condemned to repeating it, but at higher cost. Now, there are several other game changers that we could talk about, but because of time, I'll just quickly go to the theonomic principles and how we can apply them. The first, of course, is transcendence and eternal perspective. The second is God-centeredness, that we are guided in our choices by divine truth. Because we already saw in our second stanza, that's what we expected of our young people, to be guided by divine truth. Our leaders also to be guided by divine truth. It's also called on virtues. The virtues of reverence, of love, of obedience, of trust, of faith, of hope, and of service. In contrast to all of these values, economic values are material and temporal. Economists created their own human being, which they call economic man. I also ask my student, who will marry an economic man? Because he's selfish, he's greedy, he's hedonistic, he won't love you. You can't befriend such an individual. Because it's absorbing self. But the essence of marriage is about giving. The essence of nation building is about giving. The essence of, the essence of building relationships is about giving. It's not about taking and taking and taking. So if you build a wall on taking and taking and taking, it is inevitable that you have rich men, very few, and you have Lazaruses, so many of them. The rich man will be spiritually bankrupt. And his consequences is hereafter. But while now, he's going to create so much social, political, and economic upheavals globally. And look at the history of the world. That's why those who are 
whatever discipline you study, pay attention to history. Because there's so much in history that will not be captured in any of those disciplines. And you need that to have a sense of understanding. Then the fourth is stewardship. Economics talks about ownership. I own it. That's what I want to acquire, accumulate, and consume. But you know my principles about stewardship, and that has implications. It means that you recognize that somebody gave it to you. And even if the people do not question you, the one that owns it is going to hold you to account. And secondly, is the issue of responsibility. The one who owns you has an original design, how you should use the resources, how you should use the gifts, how you should use the talents. If you use it to satisfy your own will, there are consequences. And then, of course, there are issues of accountability. And finally, issues of reward. Then the fifth principle is that of rebirth and renewal. And then finally, the principle of eternal reward. I believe we are at the point as a crossroad where we need to make real choices at personal level, at family level, at organizational level, at national level, and at global level. That's why I don't see the problem as a purely economic problem or as a purely Nigerian problem. It's a problem of humanity. We may claim we have advanced technologically, but technology doesn't make people. Relationships make people. What is the quality of the relationship? It is the quality of that relationship that counts. Are we building communities? Are we building the society? You cannot build society and community. And the community, when I talk about community, is not your local community. It's a community of humanity. The idea that some people are different from others is nonsense. Total nonsense. Historically, scientifically, it's total nonsense. And those are the falsehood that you must remove so that you can have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So globally, we have choices that we need to make. Is that how we maintain the status quo and we know the way, the direction the world is heading? There are going to be increasing discontent all over the world. Because where few people have stakes in the existing system and the majority do not have stake in that system, there's going to be crisis. The stability depends on a majority having stakes. And the way the majority will have stakes is to have a level of liberty, the degree of equality, and a level of brotherhood. Staff the economy system of liberty, of equality, and of brotherhood, and you don't have a global humanity. You don't have a national aspiration. So the second is, if we refuse and um, insist on maintaining the status quo, then we may have to change our material and spiritual aspirations to say that we reject all those good theonomic virtues. We prefer the virtues, the Devices of greed, of hedonism. And then finally, we may decide to transform. I'm not prescribing for anyone. I believe that those who have ears will hear. Those who have eyes will see. Those who have hearts will understand. Thank you very much. God bless you.